Mayor Bach, yesterday we had the State of the Region uh, with the County Commission. Just to get your perspective, 2012 was a year that a lot of citizens in Colorado Springs had to endure some hardships that they've never thought they'd have to before. What do you have to say about the people who live here and their resilience after a year like 2012? Well, it has been a very tough year in lots of ways, uh, most uh, notably the Walter Canyon Fire. And we had loss of life there and <clears throat> a lot of people lost their homes. It was devastating, worst um, <clears throat> really tragedy ever in the history of the city, worst fire in Colorado ever. It, it was stunning really to see a couple things. First of all, the way the people who had been hurt conducted themselves. Uh, they, they really did handle themselves with grace uh, and um, incredible patience by and large uh, in the face of tremendous loss <clears throat> and so I'm just so um, appreciative of that and respect them so much for the way they worked through that and continue to do so and I think you're talking about the community in general you know I've lived here 45 more years plus more years and um, to me it's the greatest example of our city coming together uh, from all across Colorado Springs uh, you know that Karen Share raised what over a million pounds of food right. and you know, way, hosted a um, community rising concert at World Arena, and I think they raised a million dollars. And uh, a day or two after the fire, I called a close longtime friend, Bob Cutter. I said, I, I need help. We don't have a plan for what to do now. And Bob Cutter stepped forward, and he's still out there running Colorado Springs together to help all those people who have been hurt. So I'm really proud of everybody in our city. And as we look forward to 2013, uh, one of the main things on the horizon uh, is the budget. Uh, we have to get that straight. Uh, how do you kind of oversee that and, and might be stating the obvious, but the importance of fiscal responsibility uh, when settling this budget uh, going into 2013? Well, we're in a period of restricted resources. In other words, we're not going to have as much money as we'd like uh, to be able to do all the things we wish we could do. It's a reality probably for every city in the country, uh, every state in our, in our nation really. And so this is a point in time when we have really no choice but to rethink everything we're doing, uh, to reinvent the way we deliver city services, to uh, unleash the ingenuity of our employees, and they have a lot of it, by the way. We got a lot of great people in our city who have tremendous ideas on how to deliver even better service on limited dollars. So although it's a very challenging time in that respect, it's also uh, exhilarating to, to see pe people uh, finding solutions uh, to serving our citizens in ways that maybe we hadn't thought of before. Uh, everyone needs to understand we don't have unlimited money. Uh, I'm concerned about still not having enough bus service. I, I hope you know that in our budget next year, uh, which is balanced, and Council has passed that on a first reading, which I very much appreciate. Uh, we're turning back on the remaining 3,500 street lights that were turned off. We're adding back evening bus service. And uh, we're adding 50 police officers up to 25 more community service officers in the police department, uh, 30 more firefighters, and we're going to continue to water our neighborhood parks that we brought back in 2011. That's a lot, uh, but we're doing it within limited resources and a balanced budget, and we accomplish that by finding efficiencies elsewhere. I will say to you, though, that I'm, I'm very disturbed about the situation on watering our parks. Colorado Springs Utilities is owned by the citizens of this community. We own our utility. And our utility is continuing to raise, raise water rates to us. Uh, in a two-year period from last August um, through, um, uh, actually uh, August of uh, 2011 through 2013, a two-year period, we will have incurred a 27% price increase from our uh, city-owned utility to water our parks. We pay by far the highest rate for watering our parks of any city in the Front Range. Now, uh, to balance the budget, we had to asked council to lower the parks uh, budget by a million dollars. Um, and a big part of that is because of um, our um, not being able to get a break on water rates from our own utility. Council has pledged that it will work with utilities to try to get that rate lowered. And as you know, I think uh, Colorado Springs Utilities reports to city council, not to the mayor. So I have no authority there. Uh, I'm hoping that my colleagues on council will convince utilities to absorb um, that price increase, which I think they can easily do and deliver water at a fair rate. Why do you think that the price uh, for water is going up so drastically in a two-year period? Well, certainly I, I would expect, and this is a, just an assumption, I, I don't know if actually, but I would expect that the southern delivery system that's under construction would be a factor in that because there is a large cost associated with that. 
Um, and um, so I'm assuming this reflects uh, cost increases for utilities. I have said that I question whether or not our utility is running as efficiently as it can, uh, especially in the area of public affairs. They have a $5 million budget. Uh, they have 21 people on staff. I'm told that the Director of Public Affairs for Utilities is paid almost $200,000 a year. That's not personal. I think uh, that person is an outstanding individual. But uh, why are we having a municipally owned monopoly spending that kind of money on marketing? Certainly they need to keep the ratepayers informed. There's a cost associated with that, but $5 million to me is very questionable with 21 people in-house and yet they have to go out of house and spend all kinds of money on consultants. So I'm hoping City Council will delve into that and we'll look at other areas within the utilities budget where efficiencies could be possible, just as we've done in the municipal government. We have gone through every department and we've eliminated positions we don't think are critical to save money. Most of those were vacancies, fortunately. We, we have not had to lay off a lot of people, which I'm thankful for. Um, so again, we're in an era of um, restricted resources. We have to find creative ways to do the job. We'll move on to city pensions and the recently started uh, pension program. Where are we on that and, and the significance of that? Well, again, uh, like probably just about every other city in the country, every state, um, we are headed toward insolvency in this city of Colorado Springs if we don't rein in our expenses. And we have guaranteed pensions, which is a wonderful thing. The problem is we can't afford it. And um, at the very least, future generations of city employees, I believe, will need to be on a different retirement plan, not unlike you and I in terms of perhaps a 401k, something like that. The problem is that the market, stock markets are not going to grow enough, we don't think, um, to accommodate the mushrooming cost of these guaranteed pensions. If you go to work today for our city at 25 and you work for 30 years until you're 55, you then get a guaranteed pension of at least 80% of your last three years average salary. Now, if you look at the demographics, you're probably going to live for another 30 years past that. So. Uh, run that number yourself. And, and that says if you join us today at 25, we better be planning for 60 years, 30 that you work and 30 that you're retired. How are we going to do that? So it's, it's just a matter of being honest with ourselves and, and uh, realizing that we're not going to be able to sustain that kind of escalating expense and we're going to have to deal with it. We've got a lot of people involved in this um, solutions team, including uh, representatives from the workforce, uh, fire police and, and the general city staff, as well as some uh, leading uh, CPAs and, and community people. And I think they'll come forward in the next few months and give us some suggestions. Last question. I know you have a, a few things going on today. 2013, what does that look like to you and for the people here in Colorado Springs? Well, it's a mixed bag. Um, I prefer to think about the, the positive upside. Um, but let me first say the challenges. Uh, one, again, is our fiscal situation. We are so dependent on volatile revenue sources, sales and use tax. Uh, that we need to be very concerned about what might happen. Um, if the sequestration happens in Congress and we have huge cuts in, in uh, the military, that could have an immediate impact, huge impact on our job base here. Um, with the uh, Bush era tax cuts expiring potentially and uh, also maybe other tax increases uh, passed by Congress and the President, uh, that could dampen our economy even further. We could slip deeper into recession here. I don't think we're out of the last recession, honestly. We're, we're edging forward, but we have some real risks there. And I, I would just say to you, the upside of all that is we are building our reserves. I'm very proud uh, that our city now has an all-time level of rainy day funds. We don't have enough, according to the General um, Government Finance Officers Association, but we're on our way toward that. So we need to have reserves so if we go through tough times again, we don't have to take emergency measures like we're done years ago and turning off street lights and stopping water in our parks. So we need to be very careful fiscally um, and hope for the best. I think the most important thing this city can do with respect to the economy is become the most business and citizen friendly city in the country. That will help stimulate job creation, encouraging employers to stay and grow here and to move here. And so our city's role is to just be the very best place to be in business. And we're working toward that and I think we're making progress. And after all, this is a tremendous place. Everybody I meet, tells me what a wonderful place this is, and it can get better.